This video will cover the topic, finding solutions in an interval for a basic tangent, cotangent, secant, or cosecant equation. For our first example problem, we will find the solutions of our tangent equation, tangent theta plus square root of 3 equals 0. What would be the first step in solving this equation? Well, for our first step, we will need to isolate our tangent theta in order to solve for tangent theta. We can achieve this by subtracting square root of 3 from both sides. This results in tangent theta equals negative square root of 3. Okay, so we have now solved for our tangent theta, but how do we find the solutions? Great question! To find the solutions for tangent theta equals negative square root of 3, we first need to identify which points on our unit circle result in negative square root of 3. Tangent theta equals y over x, so we need to find a y and x value that when divided result in negative square root of 3. Look at our unit circle, we see that the coordinate points that result in negative 3 are negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2. When we substitute these coordinate points into y over x, our result for both is negative square root of 3. This means that our solution for our original problem can be found at these points. Now that we have identified our coordinate points, we need to look back in order to look at the corresponding radian terms for our coordinate points. Our corresponding radian terms are 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. This means that if we substitute 2 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3 for theta in our original problem, our result will be 0. Thus, our final answer for this problem is theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Now that we have finished an example for a tangent equation, would the next problem be a cotangent equation? Exactly! For our next problem, we will use the following cotangent equation, square root of 3 cotangent theta minus 1 equals 0. For our first step, we will need to isolate our cotangent theta in order to solve for cotangent theta. First, we will add 1 to both sides from our equation in order to eliminate 1 from our cotangent theta side. This results in square root of 3 cotangent theta equals 1. Next, we divide both sides by square root of 3 in order to eliminate the square root of 3 coefficient from our cotangent theta. This results in cotangent theta equals 1 over square root of 3. Now that we have isolated our cotangent theta, we now go back to our unit circle in order to identify which points on our unit circle result in 1 over square root of 3. Cotangent theta is equal to x over y, so we need to find a x and y value that when divided results in 1 over square root of 3. Looking at our unit circle, we see that the values of 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half comma negative square root of 3 over 2 result in an x over y value of 1 over square root of 3. Now that we have found our coordinate values, we need to find the corresponding radian terms of our coordinate values. Looking at our unit circle, our corresponding radian values are pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. This means that if we substitute pi over 3 or 4 pi over 3 into our original problem, our result would be 0. Thus, our final answer is theta is equal to pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Can we now work on a secant equation? Of course. Let's use the following secant equation for our example problem. Secant theta minus square root of 2 equals 0. For our first step, we will add square root of 2 to both sides of our equation in order to isolate our secant theta. This results in secant theta equals square root of 2. Secant is equal to 1 over x. Thus, we have 1 over x equals square root of 2. We need to find a value of 1 over x that is equal to square root of 2 on our unit circle. To streamline this process, let's convert our 1 over x to x. We first cross multiply 1 over x with square root of 2. This results in square root of 2x equals 1. Next, we divide both sides by square root of 2 in order to isolate our variable. This results in x equals 1 over square root of 2. Next, we need to eliminate the square root from our denominator. In order to accomplish this goal, we multiply square root of 2 on both the numerator and denominator of our fraction. This results in x equals square root of 2 over 2. This would be equivalent if we were looking for the value of cosine theta 
of square root of 2 over 2. With the process we have just completed, we have converted our secant coordinate to a cosine coordinate. We now go back to our unit circle in order to find an x coordinate that is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Looking at our unit circle, we have two coordinate points, square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2, and square root of 2 over 2, comma negative square root of 2 over 2. Now we have our coordinate points, we need to find the corresponding radian points. Looking at our unit circle, our corresponding radian points are pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Thus, our final answer will be theta equals pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. We've been through a lot of math problems. Now that we've gone through tangents, cotangents, and secant equations, can we go through cosecant problems? We have been through a lot of example problems, but it's always good to practice your math skills so that you can improve. For our final example problem, we'll use the following cosecant equation, cosecant theta plus square root of 2 equals 0. For our first step, we subtract square root of 2 from both sides in order to isolate our cosecant. This results in cosecant theta equal to negative square root of 2. Cosecant is equal to 1 over y. Thus we need to find a 1 over y value that is equal to negative square root of 2 on our unit circle. Wait, this seems similar to our last problem. Does this mean that we will convert our problem from solving for 1 over y to solving for y? Exactly! We will convert our problem to solving for y. This means that we will cross multiply our problem. This results in negative square root of 2 times y equals 1. We then divide negative square root of 2 from both sides. This results in y equals 1 over negative square root of 2. We now need to eliminate the square root from our denominator. In order to accomplish this, we multiply both the numerator and denominator from our fraction by square root of 2. This results in y equals negative square root of 2 over 2. This means that we need to identify the coordinate points that have the y value of negative square root of 2 over 2. This would be equivalent to if we were looking for the value of sine theta equals negative square root of 2 over 2. Looking at our unit circle, the coordinate points that contain a y value of negative square root of 2 over 2 are negative square root of 2 over 2 comma negative square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 comma negative square root of 2 over 2. Now that we have our coordinate points, we need to find the corresponding radian values. Look in our unit circle again. Our corresponding radian values are 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Thus our final answer is theta is equal to 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. I think I'm starting to understand how to find the solutions to these problems. First, we need to isolate our tangent, cotangent, secant, or cosecant value. Once those are isolated, we then need to find the coordinate values that match what our equation is equal to. Once we find those coordinate points, we need to find the radian values that correspond to the coordinate values that we found. This results in our final answer. Great job! This might have been a long topic to get through, but it seems that you have an understanding on how to find solutions in an interval for a basic tangent, cotangent, secant, or cosecant equation.